Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, this time I'm going to recap this MVS here. Um, you might have seen it in the previous video. Um, I did demonstrate sound there through headphones. I couldn't hear it myself. I had the you know, little headphones up to the, the mic on the camera. Um, but that wasn't coming out of the headphone socket. Uh, you know, you've got the headphone socket, the... I forget which one it is now. I think it's the back one and then that one's amplified so I've tried both of those neither of those work the when I used the headphones in that last video I actually was using the jammer edge my jammer super guns got a little um, three and a half mil socket on the back of that Wait, and there's no other uh, active components there on the super gun it just passes it through from the jammer edge so the sound is coming out of here amplified because it was working with the volume slider I think it was the master one it was this one it was working with um, so I'm just not sure why there's nothing coming out of these two here. Um, I did replace eight of the caps actually previously, I'll show you those in a minute. Um, but I thought sod it, let's just replace them all so I've got a full cap kit here. So uh, I'll get the lid off and we'll start taking off the old caps. So you can see the ones I've already done here, uh, four 4.7 microfarad caps there, four 4.7 microfarad caps there. So. Um, I'm not sure where to start from. I might start around here and just work my way backwards. Um, in fact, I might do these ones over here first, actually, next to this um, op amp, whatever it is here. There's good, I think there's a couple of op amps on here by the looks of things. Uh, we've got a JRC chip down here. Um, we've got a BA something or other there and a BA something or other there. So, and a BA something or other here. Uh, 10324. An LM324, that's an LM324. So I think we've got two op amps there. I think that's an op amp as well. Um, so I'm not really sure what connects where here. Um, that's a DAC, I think, isn't it? So I think one of the channels, or two of the channels, might go through that DAC, and then maybe this is merging the third channel or something, and then they go through this these two op amps. I'm just, and then I'm not really sure why there's another op amp here. So it may well be that the one for these. Uh, you know these ports here is uh, you know the op amps failed or something I'm honestly not sure but what we do know is the amplifiers working um, certainly the preamp stuff up here probably is working otherwise wouldn't have sound coming out of the jammer edge you know the amplified sound um, that was demonstrating with the headphones uh, on the super gun last video so yeah not sure but I'm, I'll start over here and then I'll work my way down I think down here and then we'll do this lot last because I don't think any of those are going to be relevant to the problem I'm getting I think it's going to be either these here or some of these caps around here And then just heat the pin and pull the cap from the other side once it reaches temperature. I can feel it moving one way. That pin, although it looks free, is probably not on the top side. So a bit of heat, again pulling it through. Heat, wait for it to reach temperature and then start to pull it once it gets to temperature. It's obvious, um, you know, once it's up to temperature, it's important you don't pull it unless it's completely molten on both sides. Otherwise the cap won't come out and you'll damage your trace. It's almost there now. There we go. And then of course you can unblock the solder here um, just using the desolder pump. That should work okay. I don't know why caps just tend to be problematic and decide they don't want to come off um, even when you've got rid of most of the solder with the solder pump you're actually better off heating them and gradually just wiggling them through on the other side. Um, but yeah, that's okay on the other side. As you can see, we've got sorry, uh, no damage there at all. Um, the important thing is the cap's off now, and it's marked on the board, and you can see we've got a plus on that side there, so the negative's on the, the right-hand side. So then get your cap and the board. Uh, obviously get it the right way around with regards to the polarity. Um, and then just try and hold it from underneath with your other, you know, your finger from the same hand. Um, just get a bit of solder onto these two points here. Make sure you leave it long enough to go flow through onto the other side. Inspect from the other side, make sure it's nice and straight. Like that, that's not too bad. It's tilted a little bit. Sorry, I know you can see that. It's tilted a little bit towards the camera here, so I'll straighten it a little bit just to apply a bit more heat, I think. And if I hold it from the underside, uh, hopefully you can still see this. I can, Once it reaches temperature, I'll be able to feel it move, I think. 
Yeah, that's it, that's straightened up. So I can trim those off now. And we can clean all the flux off later with some IPA and a brush. So you can see that one's now been done. Uh, just do the other two over there, this one down here. I might retest after having done those four actually just to see if there's any difference. So I completed most of the recap a few days ago actually. Um, interesting thing, I've just come to power it up, uh, I'll switch it on and show you. What was happening, it was flashing around, in fact it's, it's going all, giving all tests past now. I've just got it working again. Um, there's a bad connection, I'll see if I can zoom in. Uh, it's, where is it, it's here. Um, yeah, I need to get some solder and flux. I don't know if you can see where the X is on the silk screen, the white X. Let's see if I can just point here. Just here. There's a trace, and it is the slightest bit of corrosion on it. Um, now, what was happening is I powered it up, and it was just flipping round. You know, it shows the green screen with the blocks and things down the left-hand side here. And then it would just, like, reset and do the same thing, and then reset and do the same thing. I thought, oh, God, you know, I've got a fault with this board now. What's going on here? So I stuck the diagnostics bias on. Um, I'll just see if I can re-simulate it now, actually. I'll just, just wipe this area here. Just see if I can get the connection to break again. Switch it on. Oh, no, it's passing every time now. Um, but, yeah, so I got the diagnostics BIOS on there, and the backup RAM error um, was there. And no matter what I did to the board, um, the backup RAM error was there. And I thought, okay, well, let's just, pr let's just probe around the 74HC32 here. You might have seen one of my early Neo Geo videos. That was the fault with backup RAM on my MV1FZ. And if we probe around this, you'll see that's the supply. It's a high. That's fine. And then this pin here. In fact, it's doing the same thing now. I'm surprised it's actually working. Um, this is strange. Um, you can see that pin there, we're getting nothing. And if you follow the trace, it goes along here to a via. Just down here somewhere, I forget where the hell it is now. There's two, two vias. Let me just see if I can find the damn things. Hang on a second. Yeah, there's one via there, so we've got a low. And then there's another via somewhere there. I can't see the damn thing now. Uh, reflowed uh, the bottom of this uh, SMD uh, 42, well 43256 chip here, so it's not that. Um, then I inspected around here and I found um, just a tiny bit of corrosion on that trace there. I'll zoom in so you can look, but there's a tiny little gap. And if I measure continuity, I don't get continuity. It's actually resistant to about 1K or something, 1.3K, um, from the, the left side to the right side over the gap. Uh, you know, over the gap, so there's some indirect connectivity somehow. Um, maybe it's just via the bit of whatever contamination is between the, the gap and the trace there. But so if I put you on macro now, hang on. Right, so we've got super macro there. Uh, if I just move up, can you see? Uh, let's see if I can get something to point with. Hang on, sorry, not easy. Um, just here, there's a little nick. I'll see if I can get any closer. I don't know how close that's going to get. There's just a little gap between where I've tinned it on the top and on the bottom. Just there. So, yeah, I think I'm going to get a, a think single strand of wire and try and solder just over it rather than stick a bridge wire. Um, that's what I might do. The other thing I've done for the Eagle Eyed out there, you'll have noticed on these chips here, there's still a little bit of corrosion there, but there was quite a lot of corrosion all the way along here. So I've cleaned most of that off with a fiberglass uh, brush um, and then just used a cotton bud with some WD-40 to because that's a, a dissolvent to clean over the bottom end, ends of those, so they're all right. Um, but obviously, I don't know whether this works until I get some some boards, you know, with the PCMCIA adapters there to, to test the card facility, not card, card, save card, you know, memory card facility. So one or two of these might be faulty. It's not uncommon when you get the amount of corrosion you have there, for, where it was right on the tops of the pins here, um, for it to leak into the, the chip itself. But um, and then the other thing I've done here um, is. Again, use some uh, dissolved braid with some flux and a bit of solder on the dissolved braid and tin 
the edge of these connectors here, the wires, because they were those were all corroded. Um, wasn't causing any problems, but I thought I should deal with it really because it will cause a problem ultimately in future. Because these are so small, these wires, the size of a pinhead, seriously. Um, so it's no wonder you get problems with traces burning out and stuff on these, and you know. Um, anyway, I'll fix that now and uh, just make sure it's okay. So the way I chose to tackle this particular problem, as you can see, I exposed a single strand from this uh, several strand wire here, and I've soldered it. Um, it's just hanging on over there. So um, yeah, I'll perhaps give you a super macro in a minute, but I'm just now going to snip off the end here. I'll just lift it a little bit and snip it, and hopefully we should get a good connection. So there you go. There's a super macro. Uh, I don't know if you can see. It's like a single strand of wire just over where the brake was. So. Um, and I've just tested continuity, we've got good continuity to the wire on the top of here because the wire is, is just up here somewhere, I forget where it is now, it's just, just near my thumb uh, it goes under the chip, under the resistor pack so we've got good connectivity there, I'll just test it, make sure it works okay the other thing I might do, that I sometimes do on things like this, where I've done tiny 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 little spot repairs that might not be obvious, that could be subject to future damage is use a red permanent marker, you know you can wipe it off with isopop, it's not going to make a permanent mark but use a red permanent marker and just draw a circle around it and put a little arrow or something pointing to it just so that if I ever come to look at it again um, you know if there's a fault or something you know it jogs my memory as I inspect around the board I'll be like oh what's that red arrow and zoom in on it um, but that's for my own benefit really rather than anybody else's so I just thought I'd show you I've got this uh, powered by a separate power block now that's a 5 volt 8 amp uh, power supply um, you can see it's just temporarily going into fly lead that's coming off there um, I'll mount something a bit more permanent once I've got more time and stuff. Um, you know, somewhere on the case edge, I might put it on a piece of ABS or something, or, you know, acrylic or something, and then somehow attach that to the under, to the side side of one of the back, uh, either the back or the front of the case. I think. So right now, I'm trying to get sound working on this. Um, as you saw earlier, I started to recap there, and I've recapped everything around here. I think that with the exclu exclusion of these 470, I think there's four 470s around here, um, but the sound that you know was coming out of here in the previous video, I connected headphones up to there and set the amp you know the volume here minimal, um, so that it was just loud enough to not destroy my headphones. Um, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. Um, I think what I'm going to do is get the, the, the scope onto some of these op amps actually, just to see if I can work out whether got, we've got a faulty op amp. Because this, the headphone, I'm not sure which one of these is supposed to be the headphone, but the, neither of these is doing anything. So, probing that top pin there on the op amp, um, I'll see if we can put a picture in a picture so you can see this. but. Yeah, we've got, um, and I've got sound, I've got it in sound test mode at the moment. Um, yeah, so you can see it sort of beep, beep, that's it. So yeah, we've got um, some output there. I think that might be the input actually, I'm not sure. Uh, let me just see if I can move my probe, I'm a bit restricted here. Got wires pulling me all over the damn place. Um, you've got to be careful not to short that, it's one of those side connections here, either. Uh, probe that one again. We've got a signal there. It's very low, but still that's what you'd expect probably. And I think it's these corner pins on this three two four. Yeah, that's okay. And that's okay. So that op amp would appear okay. I've done the same thing with this one down here. I've also checked this JRC. We've got inputs and outputs on all of those. No problems at all. So I'm suspecting that these two three and a half inch, uh, sorry, two three and a half millimeter sockets here are not, um, certainly from the way it's wired underneath. I don't think they are lying out. They almost look like lying in connections or something. There's certainly nothing on them because um, I've probed those as well. So I think um, based on that, and I've seen output on here. Uh, let's see if I can show you on the scope again. Yeah, it's very low, uh, but if I just adjust the volume, I think that'll make it shift. See it going up? See? The volume's pretty loud there now. And we've got a proper sized signal, and the same with that pin. There. So, I think I'm going to do a mod, actually, underneath, um, to route the left and right on there to one of these 3.5mm sockets. 
so I've carefully turned this over uh, and it's not, it's supported off the carpet here, this is important to know it's not actually making contact with the carpet because of the supports underneath um, so you can see what I've done here, I should zoom a little bit there we go, um, I use my um, track cutter, it just makes a tiny little circular indentation you can't see that one, it's just under the yellow wire in the two places there to cut off the left and right from going to this um, Three and a half mil socket, and then I've rooted the um, that white, you know, the white plastic four pin connector. You can probably just about see it on the other side there. Um, the left and right, I think two centre points of ground, um, and I've tested to make sure. In fact, I had to swap these round. Um, in the sound test there, you can do uh, left channel, right channel, or centre, um, and add them round the wrong way. So as it's wired now, yeah, the left comes out of the left speaker, the right comes out of the right speaker. So. That's that. Uh, with regards to the 5 volt mod, I've just temporarily got a bit of tape here just to make sure that nothing touches, uh, you know, moves anywhere, um, really. Um, they're not going to come off these, but you can see, you know, the f I think the first four pins on the underside here are ground. You've got f ground as the first two, and then two VCC pins, you know, plus five. Um, so, uh, and you need thick enough wire. That's about as uh, thin as I would like it to be, really. You need quite a thick wire because this, when you've got carts on here as well on the top board on it's going to be drawing at least 5 amps uh, somewhere around that region I would think um, and then this, with regards to the audio because um, you know this is a 5 volt mod effectively I won't be using the 12 volt input wherever that goes um, remove the 7805 and then the point where the 5 volts normally comes out of the regulator I've just joined that up to the you know the 5 volt input there so you know, should all just just be using five volts, and actually, you know, just tested that. That works okay. So we have got sound. All I need is the DIN connector to follow the standard AES pin designation there for RGB composite ground um, and perhaps mono sound. Um, and then that way, like I say, I can use my standard AES mixing cable. I'll get stereo audio out, and it should just work. Um, I might need to stick some drop-down resistors or something. In there, I'm not sure. I'll have a think. I might just do it the same way I did my CMVS so I can use that, that lead. So we've got a credit in there now, and I've got the headphones connected, which I'll just show you down there. Um, and if I just put these near to the uh, microphone, I'll start it. Uh, if I can. Hang on. Turn the volume up a bit. And then hopefully, you should be able to hear it. Start the game. I'll point you at the screen so you can see it. Yeah, so that's working sweet now. Stereo sound, using headphone with the output, volume slider works, no noise, um, and it's working. I've tested this with all five slots. Um, I think what we'll do now is I'll just measure the voltage I'll show you. Um, I measured it with one board, um, and with this power supply, because it's 8 amp. Not a single, uh, not a cart, I'm talking just the board, the bottom board on its own without the cart board it's, it, the voltage was around 5.3 volts which is a little bit too high but that's what you'd expect because I'm using an 8 amp power supply um, if I just try and measure the voltage here, uh, it's on DC um, the easiest way to do this is, so it's going to be difficult for me actually because the position it's in, ground's on the end uh, and 5 volts should be that pin there, as you can see 5.05 um, and it remains about 5.05 or just above 5 volts when you've got the you know slots filled there, all four slots are filled, it's bang on 5 volts with no um, games in total, it's like 5.10 volts so that's, that's pretty good actually, that 8 amp 5 volt power supply is just the ticket for this well, hopefully you found that interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.